Okay, hi folks and welcome back to another bike review. Uh, today I've got with me a really, really cool machine. It's it's not it's not what you'd expect it to be. It's my town bike. It's tiny, it's 20 inch wheels and it's got um, a very different sort of form factor or geometry. I wanna say it's like a hybrid between um, a BMX and a molten which is which which is what makes it both robust and at the same time um very 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 rideable in urban spaces at some point i was thinking you know i need a bike that i need to get on the train with that i can fit into small spaces that can fit inside the apartment that can fit inside a small space in the basement or wherever um, Something that's not my huge mountain bike or my huge gravel bike or any of my cargo bikes for that matter. Those are all big bikes, but I needed something small. So I looked into obviously what everybody kind of does, right? I looked into folding bikes and at some point I stumbled upon the idea of buying a Brompton or a Dayhon, you know, the, the regular folding bike brands. And I did get myself a Dayhon at some point and I also looked into loads of Bromptons as well. Um, so what I didn't like about folding bikes in general was that the fundamental pro with them is also the fundamental con uh, because folding bikes fold and the problem is when it does fold it has certain um, joints in the frame and the problem with those joints is that when you ride the bike if you're if you're a purist as a cyclist uh, you hear those joints creak and I'm not a big fan of creaking when I'm riding. Okay, so to give you guys a little bit of perspective of a 20 inch wheel set. Um, 20 inch wheels are pretty standard. Um, lots of uh, uh, long john cargo bikes as well, like my Bullet, have uh, the front wheel as a 20 inch wheel. So they're, they're fairly robust uh, and fairly stable. Um, 16 inch are obviously smaller and they're probably slightly less stable, but also pretty quick. Um, uh, to ride. Uh, obviously no adult bikes have wheels that are smaller than 16 inch so the Brompton essentially has probably the smallest um, diameter wheels um, on the on the market when it comes to sort of urban uh, sort of small bikes uh, with this similar sort of form factor. This bike first of all doesn't have the same geometry as most of the folding bikes have. It's more of a, a V shaped geometry so the the rear triangle is a triangle but the front triangle isn't a triangle it's it's pretty much um a rectangle um like that like a parallelogram uh shape and it's got a very very long um front tube uh or head tube rather it's essentially got two down tubes which is interesting and that form factor alone allows it to kind of be much much more responsive it does end up being the bike that I ride the most uh, because uh, I don't do long rides the most I do shorter rides much more frequently uh, and when I'm going on a short ride to just I don't know go jump down to the supermarket or um, I don't know go get bread or you know just just go from point A to point B or just go see a mate for beers around the block something I, I jump on this I, I won't take any of my big bikes I just take this tiny guy so folding bikes in general I'd say are useful um, and you should get them if you're looking to do one thing in particular fold them and put them into a much much smaller package let's say under your desk or in a shelf or in the corner of uh, your camper van. I wanted a folding bike, I had a folding bike, but I never folded it because it was just annoying to fold and I had enough space and all the use case I had for that bike um, didn't require me to fold it. So at the end of the day, if you think about the use case that you have, if you absolutely need to fold it, get a folding bike. If you don't intend to fold your folding bike that you're going to buy, then don't buy a folding bike. 
you can you can always buy a small bike that is much more robust much more sort of i want i want to say stiff uh, much less creaky when it comes to joints in the frame that you need to worry about and tension and i don't know have um quick release brackets on and grease and all that stuff like don't get into any of it so i'm a huge fan of small bikes that don't fold for urban uh, use in general what i do like on small bikes as well is high spec and it's very very important that it's built like a tank not like a brompton because bromptons aren't built like tanks the frames might be good because they're steel but but all of the other components on bromptons in my opinion are not great uh, and extremely expensive and you're mostly paying for the brand um, i needed something that had disc brake rotors i needed something that had you know like um, internal uh, gear shifting which worked flawlessly and was relatively low maintenance i needed robust um levers uh and i wanted re like top end sort of enduro level components on my bike that um no folding bike company will give you um with any of the the stock stock components that you buy on the bike and there are small companies like this one was made by it's pretty much a no-name company but it was made by a slovakian brand and they appeared out of nowhere in 2018 and they made i, I don't know a batch of like 5000 bikes and then just disappeared um or went bankrupt or whatever but in general this sort of form factor of bike has been around i've seen it very rarely because people don't pretty much know that this sort of thing exists uh everyone's seen the bromptons because there's they've got a way more marketing budget and it's more mainstream now um so but but these ones you, you you'll hardly see i i think i've seen a couple of orbeas that that have this sort of geometry and form factor but i've not seen too many others i've seen obviously the cannondale hooligan I think this is a copy of that actually, um, but uh, with better spec because it's no name. Um, but okay, so I think, you know what, enough of me talking, the sun's coming out. Let me give you some better sort of shots and uh, a, a little bit of an explanation on the spec. This guy here is very, very long. It's longer than most of these small bikes that I've seen on the market. And that head tube alone is the reason for the responsiveness and the stability of this bike i want to say um what's also nice is since it doesn't have you know a, a very straight top tube uh they've had to add that piece there for um to, to, to sort of fulfill the integrity of how the top of the bike kind of is and it's nice in a way as well because when i'm on a train or i want to pick it up i literally use this thing as a handle it's it's literally clean for me to just pick up and just run with you know you won't see this on uh bromptons this has got um 160 millimeter uh disc brake rotor uh front and back as you can see and the the braking power on this thing is phenomenal i have to say zero uh lag when it comes to stopping so and i've i haven't had to service this for the last three years i want to say um so it really really works flawlessly you can also see that the wheels can be removed with uh quick release um axles the back one doesn't have a, a quick release axle you do need i want to say a 15 millimeter uh um ratchet wrench to get that out uh, so it's not uncomplicated to uh, replace the tube on a back tire if you do have a puncture because you do need to get that guy out and it's got I'll, I'll just turn the bike around and show you uh, the hub but it's got a uh, SRAM iMotion 3 internal hub happening here so it's a three-speed hub three gears all inside the drum and those three gears are controlled by this guy here you see it's it's almost hidden it's like integrated in the handle in, in the in the in the grip basically so it's like really really sick 
Um, what I have gone ahead and done on this bike is kind of tweaked it a little bit, not too much. Um, I was already very happy with the setup of um, uh, the, the spaces over here. It all looks very, very cool actually. Um, but what I did go ahead and do is I put on here, uh, you can see that? It's a Husefeld Truvative. Um, I don't know um, the, the length of the stem, but it's an enduro stem. So super super heavy duty like this this is the sort of stem you can you can either see on enduro bikes or um or bmx or something like that like those are like i mean look at those um those bolts those are heavy duty like um like you don't see that sort of stuff on city bike i've put in a 400 millimeter um seat tube uh, uh sorry um a seat post into the seat tube uh, the reason for that is that i'm relatively tall and when i ride i want a relatively full stride uh, push down on the pedals and if i want to do that and 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 go down on the cranks i want to be seated slightly higher than um what the stock seat post allowed me to do and in order to do that i needed a seat post that could go higher and what that meant is that it was maxing out over here and if you put too little of such a long seat post into the frame there's always a risk that um you're not sort of um got that thing in well enough and that can damage the edge of your frame so i bought one that goes well deep past like almost a second weld over here inside so it's it's from a company called uh, Level Line, so that goes well deep inside. Like not here, not here, but past the second weld. So it's like a solid 400 millimeters that I have to play with. So I can lift it up and not worry about it being almost at the edge or near just the first weld. I, I needed it to be deep enough. So it's got that sort of robustness. First of all, check out these colors, man. It's just gray and gold. So if you think about it. Um, it's just beautiful in terms of uh, color scheme as well. It's not got like some sort of lollipop orange or some sort of ridiculous neon blue or something, uh, which you'd see some of the Bromptons come. I, I don't have anything against it, but I, I'm just, I just like my bikes to be clean and serious looking. If you see this guy here, it's not, it's not a quick release. So I've got it like bolted in. I've got a beautiful Sinelli um italian made um seat here it's a racing seat and i've also put on here some black spire um enduro uh, downhill pedals actually and they are absolutely beautiful uh you can see there's um lots of pegs there that grip my <laughs> cycling shoes quote unquote and you can really take those uh, screws off and service the spindles uh, with heavy duty grease and everything overall i've done i've done those sort of component tweaks and i've also what i've gone ahead and done uh, so this bike came with kenders but i've switched them over to schwalbe marathons so the schwalbe marathons uh, it's a 20 as you can see it's a 20 inch um, diameter and a 1.75 width uh, over here so they are 47406s which means in terms of clearance that's just you see there's there's well enough clearance here and here and also on the chain stay there's enough clearance here and here so i'd say if you want to accommodate even a slightly thicker tire you might be able to do that but my recommendation for this sort of bike would be to not do that um because that's pretty much the 1.75 is really an, a really okay width to be riding with in the city. It looks like a single speed setup, but uh, there is, as you can see down here, a gear cable that engages with um, the drum. And inside the drum, um, it's um, a Shimano, uh, oh, sorry, a SRAM iMotion 3. And the SRAM iMotion 3 is 
a very very good hub um, and it does a very very good job here so you can you can you can always have the option of three speeds i mostly ride on speed two or speed three i never use speed one because i'm never really climbing um but if i do have to climb i have the option of a speed one what i also like is that it's it's got a crazy cool integrated bell on the lever i've never seen anything like it it doesn't even look like a bell but it's so cool looking it's not like a, a regular road bike bell that you know latches onto to the actual handlebar but it's actually integrated inside the lever so i'm riding i'm braking but i've also got a finger on the bell like that so i can i can always have access to that guy without even like moving a thumb to look for a bell somewhere here you know so that's i mean the small things you know the, the ergonomics of use it's just like you don't even have to think your finger is just there um um to use the bell so that's that's really cool um the front hub is also a sram mth 306 it's also got a very raw look on the um, the chain uh you can see here uh it did have um a sort of chain guard but i took it off because i like to clean my chain every few rides so that it really looks uh clean all the time so i had to replace um a few washers to kind of accommodate the, the spacing for for that so i i sort of modded that a little bit myself but now look at it it's just absolutely clean there's no pieces of plastic hanging around um that prevent you from actually uh degreasing and then re re -lubing, um the chain so that's something i also did i also installed out of a piece of old bike tube i installed uh a small little chain stay protection so that if this thing flaps around and hits the chain the chain stays i think um that that won't be a problem really at all uh one thing that you need to consider when you buy a bike like this is that you need to have like a dedicated a ratchet wrench to, to take the back wheel off because as i mentioned before it's not um it's that it's not a quick release you do need to have a ratchet wrench to get that off uh which is not a big deal really uh, if you have the right tool um so you can just pop that off take it off but you have to switch this gear to gear one so it loosens the tension on the cable there and when it does that you can pop the wheel off i'm at the nymphenburg palace uh in munich so it's somewhere down there so we're gonna ride up there i'll give you some very very cool sort of b-roll shots of this bike and then let's conclude <laughs> Alright folks, I think you get the point. Um, this is me signing off. Uh, it is actually 7am right now, so I've been awake since like 6 doing this. Uh, and it's a fantastic morning. Uh, I really enjoyed taking a little spin on that guy. And um, you can see from perspective how small it actually is. I mean, this is how tall I'm standing. And that's how small that bike is. And it's so much fun to ride. I'm just in a complete sort of urban slash um, green space which is just absolutely fantastic to enjoy and um, it's a really fun uh, uh, piece of gear so yeah before you buy a Brompton uh, take a look at, at bikes like that this is me signing off I shall see you guys next time take it easy